are Australian native plants better than exotic plants? A controversial topic for sure, and one we will explore today. Plants used for gardening and landscaping mostly have two broad classifications, native and exotic plants. Native plants often grow in the environment without the aid of humans. They are plants well adapted to the environment where they are usually found. These plants often require low maintenance, especially when planted in a similar environment to which they are native. On the other hand, exotic plants or non-natives are plants that are introduced into an area where they are not naturally found, but in common gardening terms, they are usually from overseas. Different plants require different care and may fit better than others for your motives and aesthetics. It's often a personal choice if Australian native plants are your go-to solution, or do you prefer some exotic plants in your landscape and gardening needs? Personally, I'm a little biased towards natives, but I'll try to set that aside. With that said, what are the advantages of native plants? One, native plants can attract a considerable number of insects and birds that will help the ecological diversity in your area. Using native plants in your garden or landscape can increase the native faunal diversity in your area. The different insects who co-evolved with the native plants for a long time prefer native plants over exotic plants. Native planting can also create similar habitats. Gardeners and landscapers can group native plants and replicate a natural habitat. By doing this, it forms a recognisable plant community, attracting more pollinators that will help the garden or landscape flourish. Westringia varieties are good bird and insect attractors, and many also make great ground covers or hedges. Mundi Westringia is a low maintenance, lower growing plant that provides good protective habitat and is easy to grow. Naringa Westringia is a medium to tall hedging plant that Aussie finches and other small birds love. Low Horizon Westringia is a low growing ground cover that is really compact. It is considered to be the lowest maintenance ground cover Westringia. Another bird attracting native plant is Coastal Pink Corea. This plant is a medium coastal shrub that provides an excellent contrast to Mediterranean style landscapes. It is a great fit for coastal and windy areas because of its salt tolerance and low water requirements. Coastal Pink Corea has light pink bell-shaped flowers that complement the dark green foliage it provides. Meanwhile, a native plant that attracts pollinators is the Callistemon or Bottle Brush. Callistemon varieties are shrubs or hedging plants with their flowers attracting many pollinators. Callistemon is well suited to areas that need reliability. Native planting for urban landscaping can be beneficial to restoring the ecology of certain areas. Since most of the developed land is already disturbed by human activities, planting native plants can help a little bit to heal the ecological balance. And calistamins are a great choice. Two, native plants are already adapted to Australia's environment. Native plants are the perfect fit for the country's climate. They don't need to adapt to the soil, the sunlight, and the amount of water they receive because they are already accustomed to those conditions. For example, Aussie Flatbush Rigodia is a widespread native saltbush that provides a good ground cover with its grey-blue foliage. This Rigodia is naturalised in different soil types of Australia and can grow with little to no maintenance, both inland and in coastal areas. Three, native plants are resilient. They require low maintenance since they are already adapted to the environment. After the first year of planting, many native plants can survive on rainfall alone and if the right plant choice is made, they also cope well with harsh summer heat and Australia's unpredictable climate. Blue Horizon Eremophila is a blue-grey ground cover that is a good choice for a mixed planting in residential areas with Mediterranean-style gardens. Eremophila doesn't usually live on the East Coast, however, Blue Horizon Eremophila loves the East Coast because it is tolerant of drought, dry soils and the humidity of New South Wales. It has been bred to survive in regions outside its normally restricted habitat of Western Australia. This plant has a copper coloured flower that brings a different colour during winter and native birds love it. So this shows a non-local native, but still an Aussie native, can be selected to survive outside its normal environment. Four, planting Australian native plants can save money compared to planting exotic plants. Native plantings generally pose less financial risk compared to exotic plantings. 
they often better survive the establishment phase. They regularly require less specific intervention from humans for them to grow healthy. Many native plants thrive with less fertiliser and water and cope well with Australia's excessively and frequently severe La Nina wet or El Nino hot dry season extremes. Aussie natives have evolved to be extreme survivors in a sunburnt country, so why not take advantage of it? Many natives are adaptable, like Shara Lamandra, which loves the dry heat, but also has thrived in the five recent floods, staying green throughout. 5. Australian natives are beautiful. Countries overseas love our natives and so should we. The golden flowers of wattles or the striking flowers of kangaroo paws or the evergreen foliage of a lamandra are well sought after in the USA. So why not also embrace our natural beauty? Why choose exotic plants? With recent breeding, exotic plants can now be on par with Australian native plants in toughness and adaptability. The argument that exotic plants are invasive is somewhat obsolete as many exotic plant cultivars are developed to be non-invasive. Osbreed and many other plant breeders offer hardy exotic plants that are non-invasive and an excellent alternative to Australian native plants. Here are some exotic plants improved characteristics. One. Exotic plants can cope with the Australian environment just as well as the Australian native plants. Exotic plants can adapt to a new environment with proper care. One example of this is the cosmic white Raphaelepsis. This Raphaelepsis cultivar is a highly tolerant exotic tough shrub that can live in most soil types. It has excellent resistance to different plant diseases. It boasts very clean foliage and spot flowering all year round. And best of all, it has been bred to be non-invasive, being exempt from some state bans. Two, exotic plants offer a variety of colors, flower types, and foliage variations. This is one of the reasons exotics are so popular. Breeding has seen thousands of years of improvements, and as the world is a big place, the variations of beauty are almost endless. For example, cosmic pink Raphaelepsis is a leafy compact shrub that can tolerate extreme conditions. It has masses of pink flowers which will captivate the passerby and has been bred to be non-invasive. If you're looking for a beautiful ground cover, Little Ruby Alternanthra can be a very good exotic plant alternative for your needs. This plant provides compact burgundy foliage that is a sure eye catcher in your garden. This specific Alternanthra likes humidity and can better tolerate frost, provided that they are sheltered correctly or used in light to moderate frost regions. Three, exotic plants also provide longer flowering times. Having longer flowering times is beneficial for insects, birds and other pollinators. It will greatly help to diversify the fauna in your garden or landscape. Encore azaleas have this characteristic and bloom repeatedly. Breeding has ensured most Encore azaleas offer heavy flowering in both autumn and spring. Some of these are Autumn Lily Rhododendron, which boasts beautiful white flowers. Autumn Jewel Rhododendron, which blooms with vibrant pink flowers. And Autumn Bravo Rhododendron, which has orange to red orange flowers. Another exotic plant that has long flowering times is Bingo Blue Agapanthus, which can also bloom sporadically all year round. However, it has more flowers from October to November. This Agapanthus has bright blue flowers and is a well-resistant plant against diseases. Its compact form makes it suitable to plant in plant patios and garden beds and is propagated by tissue culture. The smaller compact forms of Agapanthus have been shown to be generally non-invasive in landscapes, especially when compared to the big forms propagated from seed. Choosing Australian native plants or exotic plants is a matter of what's appropriate for your garden or landscape, and of course, your mindset. Some of the characteristics of Australian native plants may outweigh those of exotic plants and vice versa. With the diversity of plants you can use for your garden and landscape, the honest answer lies in what you want your garden or landscape to be. You may prefer exotic plants over Australian native plants in providing aesthetic benefits for your garden. You may want to consider planting Australian native plants if you value the ease of your garden or landscape maintenance. 
Most Australian native plants do not require much fertiliser for them to thrive. Pruning your plants will mostly depend on how you want your garden to look. Generally, it is believed that Australian native plants require less pruning than exotic plants, which is sometimes true and sometimes not. Since Australian native plants are native to the Australian environment, most of these plants are already resistant to harsh climates that they might encounter, which is generally true. Choosing native or exotic plants is like choosing a dog or a cat. They both offer benefits, but are you a dog or a cat person, or a native or an exotic person? It's often that simple. It can be a calling. Some people like me can't decide and like both dogs and cats, and natives and exotics. But I'm slightly biased towards dogs and natives. How do you feel? Leave a comment and tell us. And don't forget to hit the like button and please subscribe. Emotion is an important aspect of gardening and this is an emotional choice. Yet, natives do have some clear advantages, as do exotics. So, if you still cannot decide, try both. You can mix and match or have themed gardens. If you have an emotional preference, go with that, as a garden should bring out your positive emotions. Thanks for watching. See you next time.